Ms. Ravisa Shivisa has an engineering master's and is a lecturer at Midland State University in Zimbabwe. She will speak on how to use a range of survey tools to monitor flooding from tropical cyclones and its impact on people and their crops. The topic of my presentation is monitoring floods using a range of geospatial tools. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So as an introduction, uh, is the monitoring uh, floods from tropical, tropical cyclones. Uh, the insights are mainly from the tropi tropical cyclone. Sorry, there's there's been a a hitch. Sorry, all good. Please continue in bit side. Okay, thank you. So, um, looking at the introduction, it's the monitoring of floods from tropical cyclones, and our insights are coming from tropical cyclone Idai impact on Shimani Man in Zimbabwe. And uh, the tropical cyclone was of 2019. Next slide. So here I've got the map of uh, Chimani Mani. Um, it's showing also where Chimani Mani is situated in Zimbabwe and also where Zimbabwe is in Africa, as you can see. Um, so Chimani Mani is actually a mountainous area so most of the people who stay in Chimani Mani actually choose to, to stay closer to the river channel so that they uh, they have access to to water to water to a good water supply. Can you go to the next slide? So as a background, the um topic of the article was damage and loss assessment due to tropical cyclone in ice flooding in Vero Man district. Uh tropical cyclones such as uh, cyclone Idai uh, originated from the Mozambican Channel in Madagascar, hence Mozambique uh, Bay was the most hit, and it proceeded to Zimbabwe and Malawi. In total, it killed uh, over one thousand people. So in Zimbabwe, Chimani Man that we hit the hardest, and this flood was characterized by extensive flash flooding. There were landslides, and there were very high speed winds. So this um, actually led to a need for an effective mon monitoring tools for flood related damage and, uh, and assessment. Next slide. So we have in pictures uh, the some of the flooding events that occurred in Chimanman. As you can see on the first picture, a very stripped away by the water. And the next one, the road was destroyed. And we can see a lot of boulders and trees that had fallen even on the third slide. We also have a mountain shown on the on the third picture. Can you have the next slide, please? So um, the tools for monitoring this flood event, uh, the first one is uh, actually satellite remote sensing, where we use the radar images and the optical images. Then um, for I also use G quantum GIS, which is an open open source software. So for the radar image, it was the Sentinel one GRD, uh, which is ground range detected image. Then for the optical imagery, there was Sentinel two and Landsat eight. So GIS was mainly there for spatial analysis, which is um, the integration of various geospatial layers, enabling analysis of the flood extent, the vulnerable areas, uh, vegetation, and the infrastructure that was at risk. The next one. Uh, now we look at the methodology. So on the um, left side, there is a um, uh, Sentinel-1 GRD, it was the processing of the radar imagery. So we had uh, the before and after image mosaic, then the, the pre-processing and other processing processes leading us to a um, flood extent map, as you see closer to the bottom. Then on the other side, we had uh, the processing of the optical data, which was Sentinel-2 before and after flood images. There was also pre-processing and then from there, there was um, normalized difference build up index and then normalized difference vegetation index. I'll explain further about this in the next slide. And um, 
The output from there was the NDBI change map and the NDVI change map. So after that, there was fusion of uh, the factorized flood extent to the NDBI and NDVI change maps, which led us to uh, the process of um, finding out about the the, assess the damage assessment and also to the validation of, of the results from the damage assessment. Can we go to the next slide? Yeah, um, okay. I'm gonna talk briefly about um, the NDVI and the NDBI. Um, okay, so NDVI is actually a measure of the access of the, it's, it's used to measure uh, and assess the health and abundance of vegetation in a given area. And then NDBI uh, is used to assess and identify the built up area within a landscape. So that's that's why we, we're talking about uh, checking the change that was there in the vegetation index and in the built up index as well. So just um, to explain further on the processing of the radar, radar data, um, I used a Sentinel SNAP in this case for the Sentinel-1 uh, GRD images. So as I said earlier, there was pre-processing of both, image, uh, both images, the before and after flight mosaic. Then there was subsetting, multi-looking, radiometric correction. These are the stages of the processing of the, um, the images. Then uh, the fifth one was terrain correction. And on the terrain correction, um, there was need for a DM, SR, TM, one second. Um, that was added to the process and then layer staking. And then the output was the flood extent map, which was later factorized for the second for the sake of fusion with the optical data. Next slide. So then for the optical um, imagery, which is where I use uh, quantum GIS, uh, there was pre-processing. The pre-processing involved atmospheric, geometric, and radiometric correction. Then there was the normalized difference built up and normalized uh, dif uh, difference vegetation index on both images. These were on, done on both the before and after flight mosaic. Then um, there was reclassification. Then the differencing. The differencing. Th this gave gave us the output maps that we have showing the difference between where the, the was before the flood and after flood, how the vegetation looked before and after flood and how the built up uh, came to be after the flood and comparing to how it was before the flood. Then the next step was fusion with the flood extent map. Then fi fi finally damage and loss assessment. Next slide. Okay, um, just a, a recap on the NDVI. The vegetation that was in Chimanimani was composed of trees and their staple crops such as rice, maize, sorghum, millet, rapoko, uh, bananas, beans, and some green leafy vegetables. And then for the built up index, most uh, built up consisted of houses, schools, deeps, bridges, and tarred road. So most houses and uh, built, most houses especially, um, as I said earlier, they are built along riverbeds and they are mainly built with poor building materials because these are rural areas where some people um, are actually struggling. So can you go to the next slide? Okay, here we've got um, the flood map, the flood extent map. Um, with the those uh, red areas are showing the areas where the flood the flood took place. Can you have the next slide? Okay, as a comparison of the pre and post flood map, we have um, the first one, the first uh, map uh, with dark gray color representing the river channel that was before flood. And then the after flood, we've got the red color represented the flooded uh, river channel. Next slide. So here we've got the uh, NDVI pre-flood pre, uh, pre period and um, the post-flood period. Can you have the next slide? Then here we've got the NDBI change map. 
next please. So uh, looking at the damage and loss uh, assessment, the total area that was affected by flood was uh, 5,882 hectares. This uh, this was sub actually submerged underwater uh, of the total of 345 uh, and 15 hectares area of Chimanimani. So it, it's actually 2% that was affected by the flood. So in terms of vegetation, 93.91%, which uh, covered around 3,716 hectares of vegetation within the flooded area was damaged. Uh, as I was talking about uh, the reason why uh, most of the people uh, stay closer to the river channel where most of the flooding took place. So on the built up area, about 28% of the built up area was affected and actually 71.75% was not affected. Next slide. So here, of course, some comprehensive insights from this study uh, is that the first one is that remote sensing technologies, they provide a detailed insights into the extent and severity of the flood. Uh, and then radar sensors are very good at mapping flood dy dynamics, including the flood extent, water depth, and evolution of flood over time. Um, this is because the radar sensors can actually access information even during the days when it's too cloudy or even when there is uh, too much vegetation cover. The, rad the radar sensors can actually get the information despite all those, those hiccups that may be there. So remote sensing and GIS tools, they provide valuable data for decision makers, uh, supporting informed decision making and emergency response, recovery efforts and long-term planning. Next slide. So some of the lesson learned uh, uh, in this study was that in disaster monitoring and agent emergency response, there is need for high resolution images, especially um, that they are necessary for quickly assessing the extent of the damage and also co coordinating relief efforts. There's also an, a, an issue of resolution trade-offs. There's need to balance the trade-offs between the spatial and temporal resolution. And then also validation is important. There's need for ground truth data for, for validation. Uh, this is crucial to ensure the accuracy of remote sensing and GIS-based assessments. That's why I had to choose Chimani Mani because it's within Zimbabwe where I, where I stay. I actually stay. Next slide. So implications for future monitoring. Um, this study allows for enhanced disaster response, uh, risk reduction strategies, is important for insurance and policy planning, and also for climate change adaptation, and also cross-sector collaborations. Um, next slide, I'm sure it's the end. Oh, okay, sorry, the conclusion. So the utilization of remote sensing and GIS in flood monitoring and uh, damage and loss assessment, it enhances the accuracy and efficiency of uh, these processes, especially uh, the fact that we use both the radar sensor and the optical sensor. It also empowers decision-making, uh, like I said earlier, with valuable information for effective disaster management. So embracing these technologies is a proactive step towards building more resilient, adaptive communities in the face of growing environmental challenges, especially here in Africa. Um, that's the end. Thank you.